Hello, one and all. Welcome back to Campaign 9, Kindred Blood. I am your host, as always, Varinity Void, and this here is Part 16. We are closing in on the end of this campaign. We're gonna go right into the 1800s for this part here, and then uh, I believe we'll finish the entire campaign by about Part 19, Part 20, around there. So, because we're gonna we're gonna go to about 1865, somewhere in that general ballpark. So, without further ado, let's uh, go read some more national ideas of some of the nations around. I think we'll take a look at Sioux, their third and fourth national idea. Let's see here. We have for the third national idea of Sioux, they they have scholar bureaucracy. Just like the other dynasties of China, we should turn to scholar officials to run the various counties, commanderies, and provinces of our burgeoning dynasty. This way, only the true masters of the form can govern, and this means an efficient administration. And Great General Cannon. As the civilization that invented gunpowder, China has been using it for warfare longer than anyone else. Cannons in particular are becoming of larger importance for their range and ability to destroy castles. So it's a nice co artillery combat ability plus 20%. It just sucks that Sue could not use that earlier uh, in the campaign. Uh, what other ones? Uh, let's see. Someone wanted me to do... Let's do Vinland. Or... Oh my goodness. I, I'm sorry if you heard that. Fucking... Uh, had a notification on the system that I don't like. Let's do Vinland's third and fourth ideas. Viking longships. The way the Vikings managed to raid across Europe was with the longship. Being ornately decorated, highly prized, and being advanced for their time, let us continue on the maritime traditions of our ancestors and set sail on our longships. Galley combat ability plus 15%. And then they preserve ancient sagas. As the Asatru faith waned, many sagas are in danger of being forgotten in the sea of history. We should work to preserve these oral histories of Scandinavia for future readers and historians. Got some good national ideas going. And while not all of them are particularly useful or as useful as uh, a different national idea in that slot could be, I definitely like that there is flavor there, and people are putting in effort to, you know, make some uh, make some unique uh, background for their uh, submissions. It is always great to see that. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into this. Also, the game might start lagging a little bit as the uh, <laughs> as we get into the 1800s because there's just so many troop movements going around all across the map. So, the revolution was starting up in uh, the last part, and that is slowly spreading around, but it's not, like, it's not, it's not severe, is what I'm trying to say. Um, no one is really embracing it, and it's, it's just been kind of meh so far. The one that can embrace it right now, I think, are, like, Cuba and the West Indies, but they're, they, they just don't feel like it. And Mondstadt is well on the way to, like, annexing the papacy once they get the Livonian Order out. The Livonian Order cannot, just cannot stand up to Mondstadt's aggression. Uh, and, obviously, West Indies and Cuba, they can't help out because it's Mondstadt. Mondstadt doesn't have a navy, but there's absolutely no way you're relieving the papacy. It's just that simple. Free Smart is still, you know, their mainland is still around their capital. It's under siege, but the peasants and the particulars, they haven't taken Paris. So I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen there. Aelcourt's got some land back in the last part from uh, defections away from Takra, but Aelcourt's can't defeat the heretics, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. We also had Nagpur in the last part. A Nagpur form in the last part, which is really cool. But in order to complete their missions that I personally made, of course, uh, they need to kill 
or need to go to war with Sumeru, and I don't think they want to. I think they might be able to beat Sumeru, but eh, I'm not sure if they want that to happen. Su is allied to Japan, but that's not really an, a good alliance, you know? Japan can't do much, if I'm quite honest. And then Shinada is over here trying to go after uh, Ryuku. I don't know if they're really going to succeed. Yayoi is not doing anything. They, Yayoi can't do anything. Like, they're just stuck here on Diego Garcia. Which, you know, they're developing it. But if you're on Diego Garcia, it has a fort. It has a regimental camp. It's got a church you can pray at. And it's got a workshop you can work at. That's about it. You're not getting anything else over there. The Livonian Order is crumbling at the seams against Mondstadt. I'm just curious what Mondstadt is going to take from the Livonian Order if they're going to take anything. Like, they might, they might not. Let's go ahead and take a look at the current wars. Why don't we? Mexico's going after Arcadia. Kabila thinks they can take on Takra. The Lost Legion is taking on Germion, which is right there. And then uh, Mondstadt against the Papacy. Yeah, it's mostly just small wars right now. I think Free Smart will put down these Separatists. Because if they don't, then Nupe gets free. If they do, then obviously Nupe doesn't become free. Uh, free Freestadt. Not Freestadt. Uh, uh, free smart put down the rebels over here and they pieced out oh no they were never at war were they no they weren't they just had peasants rising up in their mainland and they finally put them down Alv Alvern is having their own rebellions but again I don't think they're gonna the rebels are gonna do much I think Alvern will get some sent into them and re bring back their troops eventually And I also forgot, like, fuck, the Elden, the Elden Ring DLC comes out in about one month, June 20th. That, that, that shit caught me by surprise. I need to get back on the grind. I need to make a second character. What is going on over here? I thought it was only Akadia. It is, okay, so it is only Akadia. But Akadia does have quite a few troops that are pouring in to the heart of Mexico. I also saw that they wasted my, uh, military points on a, mili on a wall breach but immediately abandoned the siege. Excuse me. Didn't mean to yawn. I'm a, I'm a little sleepy from driving all over the place today. I drove for about two hours today. Oh, a little sleepy. Uh, but this is an imperialist war, and I do believe that America turned Mexico. They're going to have no problem with this war as soon as they wrap up the... Uh, the Akkadian offensive through the through the east. Oh, Mondstadt just straight up just took some land from the Livonian Order. No giving land back to the Flandreshom. No, just you know what? I want some land of yours. Give it here. All right, you know, you can do that. No one, no one stops you, Mondstadt. No one stops you. And they also took land from the papacy. Mondstadt control of northern Italy is almost complete. Any other wars? Doesn't look like it. It looks like people are just... They're chilling. What's the, what's the opinion of Shu and Lian? They don't like each other now. So Shu likes Liang. Liang doesn't, does not think the same way. Okay, sure. <laughs> like, I like you. You're really cool. Let's hang out. And the other person just mean mugs the fuck out of him. Like, fuck you. You have shit I want. Baghdad is going after the Flandrish robe. Oh, I wish I wasn't yawning from fucking being tired. Anyways, um, the United African Republic and Vinland, as well as Team No Name are in this, and 
Baghdad has called in Free Smart. And with Free Smart, the, 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 the deal is sealed. Like, there's no. It was already bad when Baghdad is doing it, is doing the business. Like, when they have declared war on you, you kind of know you're dead. When Free Smart is, is piled on top, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Free Smart even took down the rebels in West Africa. And is going after the United African Republic. Like, come on. Come on. Mexico, are you finally stemming the tide? Yes, you are. Akadia does not have the manpower to replace their troops, and so Amerjica is just slowly drilling a hole through the north. Slowly but surely. And then Johan the Fifteenth, Gunther the Fifth. That's Brewmaster Gunther the Fifth. Takra, Takra is actually not doing anything against Kabila. They, they, they don't have the navy to transport troops over, nor the military access for that matter. All right. I guess Takra is gonna lose a war to Kabila. It's, I guess it's really that simple. And the United African Republic is gonna lose this war to Free Smart. Like this is, this is bullying. Why do you gotta bully the West Africans? What did they do to you? They didn't do anything to you, Free Smart. You're just being a bitch and going after them. Congo is now relegated to South Africa. Chokwe is increasing its control over the uh, uh, over East Africa. And Makwa just doesn't have anything else left. Yemen doesn't have actually, actually have any allies. Oh, no, no, they do. They do. Uh, they're allied with Chokwi and Baghdad. I thought Yemen broke that alliance with Baghdad or the other way around. I was like, Yemen, you're 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 asking for trouble if you're not allied to Baghdad. You're asking for a lot of trouble there. And once 1800 comes around, we will look at the spread of the new institution. The revolution is fully present in Acadia. It is spreading in Mondstadt. It's giving plus 25 unrest. Like, it is, in most of Europe, it is going to be stirring revolts up the ass. Like, oof. The only reason that the peasants are not rising up is because there has been a recent uprising. Sure, you can pile on tolerance of the true faith, get minus 8.5, but it's not going to fucking doesn't negate plus 25 unrest god damn man yeah free smart is free smart is going all in the united african republic is uh this is bullying i've said it before i'll say it again i'll keep saying it I gotta bully the small powers. Even with these peasant uprisings, though, it's not, it's not like it's eating into the manpower of Mondstadt or Free Smart. Because what they lose, like fighting a 30, 40k stack of peasants, and they lose 1,000, maybe 2,000 troops. Like, if that, come on. Also, why has no one, like, vassalized Team No Name? I would think after the countless wars they've been in, getting dominated each time, like, someone would vassalize them at this point, but I, I guess not. No one wants to. And I have no idea why. Oh, Muscovy is allied with Zapatoslavia. Galicia Volhynia has, is not dead yet for some reason. I, I'm not exactly sure why. I would think people would want... Galicia Volhynia dead. God damn it, I wish that notification was not so fucking loud. I, 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 I wish I wish that system was not enabled in this fucking house. 
Whatever, it's not my choice. Holy shit, these rebels got free. Right here. Corsica and Sardinia got independence from Free Smart. So, we have, yeah, we have some dukes that have risen up and claimed independence. Interesting. I wonder if Alvern is going to take these lands, or if, you know, they're going to get allies and maybe survive for a little bit. It's possible that, the, that they survive for a little bit. Just got to wait and see. Oh, Team No Name. The Lost Legion is taking out its sorrows on the new Mayrids. Wanakama is allied to... Amerjika. Did Amerjika take some land? Yes, they did. They took a bunch of land from Acadia, pushed forward into, into the north. Free smart peace out. You, the, the United African Republic is quickly becoming disunited, dismantled, and done a disservice to. Like this is brutal, br brutalization. We have Skopje under Vo Vojvoda, Stefan the Third, Lazarevich, Lazarevic or Lazarevich. I'm not sure. But yeah, they're independent. Do they have, do they have uh, national ideas? They do. Tell me more. I'm not going to read them, but... Okay. I'm not sure what mod Doge pulled that from, but... Hey, it's all good. Mondstadt is building up a... More, uh, more refined army as it is, and for some reason, Free Smart isn't defending its homeland, so it's getting occupations from peasants as well as the remnants of Team No Name. Who's your dynasty at this point? Free Smart? You have the same dynasty as the people you're attacking? Okay. Okay, Vinland. If you if you stay in this war, I don't think it's gonna go well. And they just pieced out. Oh my god. I didn't even think they were going to take that much. What happened to the Flanders realm? I... They were here a second ago, and now they're just gone. Reduced to atoms. Literally atoms. They have their... They have two provinces. Two fucking provinces. What? Oh. This is what you get. This is what you get for, good for declaring independence, you know? Things wouldn't be like this if you stayed underneath the crown of Alvern and just just sat and, uh, and was rebellious. If you were just rebellious but you didn't declare independence, this wouldn't have happened. But, you know, independence seemed great. You got independence. And look what happened to you. Sure, you're allied with Mondstadt now. Didn't fucking help you. The end of the revolutions. Oh, boy. So no revolutionary state this time, folks. None indeed. No one took up the, uh, the cause of the revolution. Just... Yeah, no one felt like uh, embracing that liberal cause or anything. So, there's that. And we have big Bag... Oh, this is a big war! Okay! Baghdad is going after Nagpur. And Baghdad has brought in Free Smart. And Nagpur has brought in Sumeru. So, the two titans of India bringing over 400,000 troops to the to the fold going after or going against Baghdad's 340 and Free Smart's 550 it's going to be an uphill battle but can Nagpur and Sumeru best basically the undefeated Baghdad I don't know if they have faced defeat yet I really don't truly this is going to be a test of might a test of will a test of logistics as well. 
And I don't think Shedda is... No, they're not. They have, Shedda is involved with defending Ava from Shu. And Su is being attacked by Liang. And Japan is trying to defend Su. Well, no, 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 no. Japan is attacking Viti Levu. Okay. Uh, Saleh is attacking the African Republic. Anything else? Not really. Okay. Free Smart's going through Rajasthan, or the southern part of the Indus River. A lot of this is to, a lot of the occupations right now are with Sumeru and Nagpur going for just north of the Tarim Basin. Uh, but Baghdad and Free Smart, they're gathering up. And they're starting to skirmish. That's a big, that's a big old battle. Baghdad, the, 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 the discipline's about the same. Baghdad has a little bit of a morale advantage. Tactics is about the same. So, this is more so about quantity. If Who can feed in the most? And Nagpur, as well as Sumeru, were not able to feed in enough troops to the battle. Free Smart and Baghdad just, they... they they have so much they can dedicate. It's it's ridiculous. And as that battle was taking place, Free Smart is just taking a free aim at uh, at the western edge of Nagpur. There's no fort over here, so Free Smart's just like, hey, let's pour in. Let's keep pouring in troops. Patan is about to go down, and Sumeru and Nagpur just don't seem to want to do anything about it. They're more focused on the Khyber Pass, as well as uh, the north around Kochkor, as well as Uzkend. This avenue of, uh, of attack and defense. Yeah, with them, with Nagpur and Sumeru just not plugging this gap, or at least caring to plug the gap, it's just feeling like there's, there's not much left in this war. This feels like a fatal blow. Because Nagpur's capital is at Il or is right over here at Nagpur. It's not. It's not far away. I don't think that they're going to last much longer. Sure, the the war score is positive right now, but it's within the next year. That capital is in serious danger of being besieged. I'm just going to look, see if there's anything else going on in Europe. Alvern has some rebels. The United African Republic can't... The United African Republic cannot do anything. And yeah, it's just... It's free smart just all the way. For Europe, at least. Free, it's free smart and Mondstadt. The only one that can really contest free smart's power is Mondstadt. There's... I don't feel like that can be any less true. Let's see. Oh, okay. Free Smart got turned back on the Gangetic Plains, but Nagpur gets turned back over in the western part of the Himalayas. Still, I mean, I still think Ilishipur is going to be in serious danger. Because Free Smart and Baghdad, they're starting to pour in heavy numbers into the subcontinent. They're about the Khyber Pass is under siege. The uh, the north, the Western Himalayas, they're coming under attack. Rajasthan is completely taken over. It's just got to rally, pull out all the stops, recruit as many troops as you can, pile up. Free Smart driven back, but for how long? Sumeru, Nagpur, they're piling up, but Free Smart, they just got it. They got it done. They won the battle. And they lose the battle just to the south. Sumeru and Nagpur, they're trying, but Free Smart won that battle too. Oh, it's a disaster. Once they. Because there's so many small stacks, if you lose a big battle. That stack that won, that 
big battle can just start wiping out those one and two stack regiments that are surrounding and it's it it's a snowball that keeps just that keeps going let's see how the quality stacks up free sport just has that morale oh my goodness they've got the morale uh, and the and also the discipline. So yeah, Nagpur and Sumeru are very much relying on quantity to beat out Free Smart, but that's uh, that's a losing formula because uh, you know Free Smart fields over five hundred thousand troops. That's a little it's a little much to deal with, even if you're so far away. I mean, hell, we saw that in uh, in the last part. Shu and Liang were not able to match up to Free Smart and Baghdad. I'm just seeing uh, if there's any other big wars going on. Oh, shit. Oh, that's big. Shu and Liang are now going to war. Shu is attacking Liang over... Oh, no, Shu is attacking Su. Su is a vassal. Of Liang, therefore Shu is going after Liang. Got it. And uh, I'm very curious who is going to win this war. Liang is on the back foot with regards to their manpower and their how many units they have on the ground. So on paper, Shu should win. But I don't know. That I don't even know where their troops are. What the fuck? Liang, where are your troops? 49, 48. Okay, 41. And then Shu, where are your troops? 59, 52, 52, 42, 11, okay. Okay, they're just a little scattered, that's all. But we're, we'll see how that war develops. After we see how much punishment Nagpur can take. Okay, so Free Smart has pulled back from Rajasthan and... Nagpur and Sumeru are going to close that gap up, but as Rajasthan is being retaken, Free Smart and Baghdad are now dedicating more toward the Western Himalayas and the Gangetic Plain. They got to take down that that fortress at Surmer, and then once Surmer is taken down, they got to take over Delhi. But again, these are level eight forts. It's going to take a while to get them down. Having Multan kind of secures this front line here along the Indus River also well and also Patan is great to have in terms of a, in terms of a fortress and big battle big battle kind of like once you lose a big battle like that what are you supposed to do numbers aren't gonna win you everything just like that free smart and Baghdad are getting it done. It was looking like Rajasthan might be retaken, but now Free Smart and Baghdad is like, hey, fuck you. This is our land. I will say their manpower is being stretched a little bit, just a little bit, uh, since uh, Free Smart has about 250,000 troops left, or 250,000 manpower reserve. And Baghdad has about 150,000 in its manpower reserve. Nagpur and Sumeru... Nagpur is scraping the barrel. Sumeru still has a decent reserve left. But this is... This is punishing. Su... Or Shu... Is pushing heavily into... The middle of Liang. And if Shu can get down Kaifeng... It's pretty much over for Liang. And Liang can't do much. However, it seems as though... Uh, Shu has already been winning battles against Liang, uh, since Liang only has around 100,000, and Shu has around 175,000. Uh, it's called Pingyang is under siege, and it's just seeming like, what can Liang do to stop Shu from running a train through? Some of these words are, like, rhyming, and I'm I'm not trying to make them rhyme, but it's just like, I'm catching myself, like, am I... Am I I'm not rhyming on purpose, right? Something? <laughs> uh, but yeah. There's peace. Nagpur pushed back just a little bit. Baghdad took one province up here. Freesmart took a few over here. But that's it. For as big of a war as that was, I, I'm, I'm shocked 
that uh, Baghdad did not push for more gains. Like they could have, they could have easily like pushed all the way to Eliship War if there was a little bit better troop management. But I guess they just didn't feel like it. They were content with that. They also, uh, oh, Free Smart has the one or the monument. I didn't realize they did. So there is no fort here, but the global modifier is all right. If they upgrade it again, it'll, and if they put a fort down here, this, this province becomes pretty fucking good. But until then, it's like, eh, it just stays as is. I don't know if Freeshmart is ever going to get these troops out, though, because they're landlocked, and Malkor hates the shit out of uh, Freesmart. So these troops might just sit here, and Freesmart might be left without, I would say, 69... Actually, I'm not exactly sure how much, but over 100,000 troops. What's the quality difference between Shu and Liang? Let's see... Shu has the discipline, they don't have the morale, and they have the tactics. So, pound for pound, Shu outdoes Liang's army and can cut down Liang troops, but Liang can just stay in the fight for longer. Yan is allied with Shu. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Dark days for the vanilla tag of China. Uh, Li Yue doesn't have any liberty desire, so they are contributing what meager forces they can. Nanjing is under siege, and I have to imagine Kaifeng is going to be under siege soon, too. And obviously, Shu wants all of this land. All of it. Oh, I was going to say, did I see Nagpur going after Sumeru? That would be wild. Okay, not, not too much happening in Europe. Europe is pretty much set in stone. Or not set in stone, but set in place. Like uh, They don't really want to go to war with each other, lest they want to trigger a chain of alliances. And I don't know if they want to do that. Alecorks doesn't have any allies. Takra doesn't have any allies. Man, that's rough. That is rough. Ping Yang is under siege, Nanjing is about to fall, and Liang is trying to scrape together what it can to form a defense. I don't know if you can I don't know what you can do, Liang, but let's see. They're already at minus 58 war score. Nanjing is down. Kai Fang looks to be in the crosshairs. I have to imagine that Shu is just gonna take a large amount, probably Li Yue Harbor, as well as, you know, the valuable city at Xi'an. Maybe even the Suzhou. What is this war for? Uh, that province. I don't know what province that is. Well, regardless, whatever province it is, I don't see. I don't see how, Sh how Shu doesn't take it. Oh, goodness. Remember to stay hydrated, folks. Always remember to stay hydrated. And there goes Ping Yang. Ping Yang and Kai Fang are down. That is lock and key. Yan may be taking punishment, but Liang is getting brutalized. Ava is also a vassal. So three vassals, two tributaries for Shu. Interesting. Ava is rebellious, but I have to imagine it's not gonna. It's, they're not gonna be rebellious for long. Probably not. We'll see. Free smart, you're not allied with anyone. Or no, I mean, you're not at war with anyone. 
Beijing is under siege. This is probably like the one campaign, the one AI only campaign where it's very plausible that we'll see China United under a native Chinese tag and therefore um, someone will claim the heavenly duty which enables the Empire of China. Which, I gotta say, that's gonna be pretty fucking interesting if that actually happens. I don't think it'll happen, but it at this rate, it is possible. If Shu wins, like, another war, or maybe another two wars against Liang, they'll control most, if not all, of the, uh, of this, of the key places in China and basically be, be ready to claim the Mandate of Heaven. I don't see how they don't. Unless Baghdad comes through and smashes all hopes and dreams. That's also possible. That's also possible. I would not put it past Baghdad to do that. You know? Nagpur and Sumeru are looking to finish off Shera. Shera has no allies, so this is just a straight up beatdown. A curb stomping, if you will. Just like how Shu curb stomped Liang. Look at all that land. Holy fuck. Um. Wow. Damn. <laughs> they really. T and even Yan got a huge chunk of land. So, uh. Damn. Well done, Shu. I guess they have w effectively won their region. And I thought. It, for a while, I thought it was gonna be a toss up, or even like Liang would, uh, end up fucking end up fucking over Shu. But, nah. Tables have indeed turned. Sardinia is allied to Mondstadt. Corsic Mondstadt, are you just befriending all these small tanks? Flandersrealm, okay. Mondstadt. Friend of the little guy. Kind of. For the most part. You know. I think we'll go to August of 1805. We'll cut the tape then. The Lost Legion is supporting the independence of Papal Venezuela. But the, the colonies don't want to declare independence. And because they don't want to declare independence, they're getting fucked over. Case in point, the Mexicans are going after America. Uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, not my bad. America is going after uh, Acadia. Who's uh, who's hiding out in the Pacific? Actually, Takra is hiding here. That's about it. Yeah, Takra is really the only one. Uh, like, who doesn't have as much power on their mainland, and so they've colonized the Pacific, and therefore the Pacific is a refuge. Oahu is alive and well. Takara also has these Hawaiian islands. Not sure how long they're going to hold out against rebels. I mean, the rebels already live there. They've occupied the land. Does Takara really care? Yeah, I don't know. All right, we have mostly peace in our time. And I was right, um, Free Smart has isolated their own troops. They played themselves. They are now without, for at least a little bit, they are without like 100,000, 150,000 troops. Actually, like, this is 40, about 40, 30, 70, 70 plus, we'll round that up to 60, 150. No, no, no. Whatever. I don't, I, I don't want to fucking count. Because I don't want to count because Sumeru is going to war with Shu. How dare you? Duck, how dare you? Attacking my subject like this. How dare you? Anyways, yes, this is against Shu. Just straight up. There's no. Because Shu doesn't have any allies. And Sumeru has brought in Nagpur. I don't think Shu is going to do well in this war, if I'm honest. Even though this is for um, the lands of Ava, Sumeru and Nagpur have a lot of troops. 
basically double what Shu has. So, just on uh, from numbers alone, I think that my boy is not going to do well. That's oh, and Sumeru took over most of Shetta's land. So this is not going this did not go to Nagpur. Southern India belongs to Sumeru. Jesus Christ, free smart. Do does do, does no one want to live in this land? Like, what the fuck is going on? Why is there so much un oh, urbanization? And the absolute... Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. The fortress at Garze is only going to hold out for so long, and I have to imagine that, like, Shu is just kind of sitting there like, what the fuck do I do against this? I'm kind of sick and tired of fighting. I, I, I expect they're tired of fighting. I don't know if they really are. Nanai is separate. What the fuck? Nanai separatists? I don't know what... Okay. Anyways, about September or October of this year, we'll cut the tape and we'll see where we are at. Oh, is Shinada in this? Shinada is in this. I didn't realize they were. So, Shu is fighting on three fronts. Or, well, or is fighting three enemies and one, like, basically united front. From all the way from the Tarim Basin to um, the Mekong River, which is this is a brutal war. I don't know how much land they're gonna lose, but they're gonna, they're gonna lose some land. But that'll wrap it up for now. Some pretty sizable movements in East Asia. Uh, Baghdad still going undefeated because of Free Smart and no one wanting to live in free smarts mainland like i have to imagine because there's just so much shit going on that there must be there just must be a common sense of you know fuck the fuck the free smart government they're not doing enough for us no matter what it is paris has not been sieged down paris has been free of rebels but everywhere else over here from Finestre to all the way to Hainau, full of rebels. And it should be noted that the devastation in the land of Takra is reaching ridiculous levels. 60%. Oh, boy. Oh, and also, you know, West Africa being taken over by Free Smart. It's just. Just look at this pink infection spreading around. Ugh. Disgusting. Well, actually, it's interesting because Free Smart is gaining land in West Africa and elsewhere. They are losing land in North America because America is sweeping across into Canada. So, give and take, I guess? Give and take? But we'll see what happens in part... What, 17 is next? I think part 17 is next. Yes, part 17 is next. Anyways, that'll do it for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at that scoreboard. Okay, so in first place... Oh, I f we'll take a look at the institution after this too. I completely forgot. In first place is Free Smart. In second place is Mondstadt. In third place is Great Shu. In fourth place is Vermont. In fifth place is Nagpur. In sixth place is Sumeru. In seventh place is Peru. In 8th place is Baghdad. In 9th place is Chokwi. In 10th place is Alvern. In 11th place is the Livonian Order. And in 12th place is Zapadoslavia. Let's go ahead and take a look at that institution. Uh, let's see. Yemen, tell me where that institution spawned at, please. Spawned in Warsaw, so Zapadoslavia... Again, that nice dosage of 100 Monarch points in each category. 
Well, actually, what is what is the province modifier? This province is home to the very first centers of the nationalist movement. Culture. Okay, that's not it's not a very big bonus if I'm quite honest, but yeah, nationalism. It is here and it is spreading around. Oh, and you're also your hegemons that are trying to be hegemons at least. Uh, Free Smart is going for the economic hegemon and Mondstadt is going for the military hegemon. That'll be all for now. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in part 17.